What point do I reach where if I go past that, you're starting to see changes in your physiology that are harmful? Hi, I'm Lee Labrada with Labrada Nutrition, and I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Dan Gartney. Welcome, Dan. And today we are going to be talking about body composition. So more specifically, Dan, I see all of these people that enter our yearly lean body challenge right. and they get into great shape mm -hmm. and they lose uh, all sorts of body fat over 12 weeks and they, they get to a point where they look really, really good. And what is a good target body fat or body composition for people to shoot for? Well, let's say what's the end goal for someone. These people do, I've seen some of the transformations that happen in your contest and they're, they're really inspiring. What I wonder sometimes as as a person who's gone through the same trans, not similar, but I've, I've tried to improve my body, is what is the end goal? What point do I reach where if I go past that, I'm hurting myself or depleting myself to get leaner? And when you talk about body composition, you're talking about how much body fat you have in comparison to your lean mass. But there's also how much lean mass you develop because let's be honest, we don't want to just be lean we want to be well developed and lean for people that have an interest in the bodybuilding physique. So in other words, we want to burn off fat, but we want to put on muscle at the same time. Exactly. And the goals that they've looked at have been, it's been fairly minimally studied, believe it or not, but there have been research uh, written and published that have looked at various groups to see how they do with vigorous exercise, hypocaloric dieting, which is what the people do that follow through your lean body contest or go through a bodybuilding regimen. Now when you say hypocaloric dieting, uh, we're talking about eating less calories than we need in a day or, or less calories than we're burning right. in one Let's day. Let's say your body needs 2,200 calories mm -hmm. in a day, but you're eating maybe 2,000 and you're burning an additional 400 with exercise. Right. So you're 600 calories below Short. what you need and yeah. you're hypocaloric. It's like overdrawing a bank account. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you're withdrawing from the savings. The right. savings in this case is stored energy and fat. Right. What we look to do is to see what is the effect of that on the body and what is the, the beneficial end goal and at what point do you get diminishing returns or harm being done. Mm -hmm. They have taken groups that vary from people going through military training, survival type training where they, they're not eating well and they are burning a lot of calories mm -hmm. during the day. They've taken people that are training for Mr. Fitness type contest and looked at them to see uh, how lean they can get with their, their scheduled regimens of exercise and diet. And they came to very, very similar numbers. And there was even a study that looked at what was the body composition of the uh, professional bodybuilders from the 1960s earlier, mm -hmm. before there was really a lot of the um, other supportive uh, drug use going on in, in bodybuilding. What they found was that the lowest optimal body fat that you can reach naturally is between five and a half and six percent body fat. Mm -hmm. Which is really low. That's, that's really low, but it sounds ridiculously high because you hear about these people talking about two and three and four percent. What you have to remember is that body fat is measured in many different ways. Mm -hmm. And some people can manipulate that by dehydrating themselves sure. or through other techniques. Well, and also the methodology that you use, as you alluded to, the methodology that you use to measure the body fat, uh, you know, can give a false body fat uh, reading. Uh, you know, it, it, right. There, and unfortunately, it's very hard, hard to get something that's very accurate. And that's why I really like to just say, with, do my skin folds go lower and lower and lower? So it's the relative change you're after, not the absolute number. For myself, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, what I, I find is that, okay, five and a half, but I know people have gotten into the fours at least, and maybe even a little bit lower than that. What do you find when you push yourself past that five and a half? You really don't drop your body fat percentage so much. You start losing lean mass mm -hmm. as well as any resistant fat mass that you're losing. And that's why when you look at these people that get very, very lean, almost unavoidably they lose strength and they lose muscle size. Right. And that's obviously counter to the overall goals we're looking for. And so what you're looking for in terms of a, both a health and fitness and a presentation manner is really reaching that low point of around five and a half, six percent, maintaining or building your muscle mass. Now, how much muscle mass can I build? Well, they've looked at that too in young populations by looking at surveys, by looking at, at, at scales of people in a population. And unfortunately, they didn't look just at bodybuilders, or maybe fortunately, they, they didn't look just at bodybuilders, but they looked at everyone and found where do people fall on average, and what's the highest they can get in a normal population. And 
for an average young healthy adult male, the peak muscle mass they can reach is around 80 kilograms. Now this was for someone who is 1.76 meters tall okay. on average. I was going to ask, and it's, yeah, right. because obviously the height makes right. a difference. Now this, this was a European study, so we're talking kilograms mm -hmm. and meters. Let's talk about that in English terms. Mm -hmm. If you're about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and you have about 170, 175 pounds of lean mass, mm -hmm. that's about how much your body can put on naturally. Right. Okay. So if you look at a 175 pound person with about 5.5% body fat, that's uh, with an additional 5.5% body fat, you're talking about a 185 pound person who's 5'8", who's very well developed. Mm -hmm. And that's a very admirable goal. And I think that actually describes a couple of your past winners. Mm -hmm. Close. Yeah. Now, what is the number for women? Because those are numbers for men. Women are very, very different, and they have not been studied near as well because they, that's just the nature of the beast. What they've done instead that is usable for information is they've looked at college athletes. That's probably the healthiest age time of your life, and it's also a period when they are able to devote themselves to regular and vigorous exercise because they're in an athletic program. Mm -hmm. They're monitored. Women, female athletes, Typically, and this was surprising to me, run in the mid-upper teens to 30% body fat. So these are women that are athletes? Basketball they're, players, volleyball players. They're exercising all the time, mm -hmm. and they still have levels that are sometimes over 20%. Right. Now, you can get women that are to below 10%. Mm -hmm. um, this is particularly classes of athletes such as gymnasts. Okay. Where they're moving their body mass, and the less body mass they have is a big advantage. Sure. Unfortunately, what we find for women is that when they get below 10% and maybe even 12, 14%, there's changes in their menstrual cycle. So it negatively impacts Th their that health. That means that their health is being affected and mm -hmm. systemically and it's being exhibited in a way that they can see and they can monitor. Men don't have that so much. We see things like depression, fatigue, um, irritability, mood changes that come along with being too low in the body fat, but so often that's just uh, ascribed to personality or, or under eating and not that your body is struggling with the low fat. Okay, so we, we uh, talked about the body fat level for men, the lowest being about 5 or 6%, and then for women, did you say it's about 10%? If you get close to 10%, you're starting to see changes in your physiology that are harmful. Right, so that's, a, that's a really a very atypical level of body fat, not, not uh, like a desirable level And one that would be fat. hard for your body to maintain, maintain in okay. a healthy manner. Well, Dan, that gives us an idea. You know, it's, uh, you, know you always hear about these different uh, body fat levels, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, this person is saying that they've got 10%, this one is saying they've got 5%, and right. you know, it's just kind of uh, nice to be able to uh, put it in, uh, in perspective, so we, we appreciate that. Yeah. If you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you have, uh, please join us for more videos with Dr. Dan Gartney. And be sure to come to labrata.com and sign up for our free newsletter. We've got a, a fitness training and uh, nutrition motivational newsletter that we send out every week. Over 100,000 people get it and are using it to get into the best shape of their life. We hope that you will also. I'm Lee Labrata, and I want to thank you very much for watching.